guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm gonna do a tag today. I'm gonna do the mid-year book freak out tag. I've done this every year I've been on booktube. This is technically my fourth video, which, because my first, I, I joined booktube in 2017. So all my videos will be below as well as the creators, as well as the questions, but you don't have to watch those videos. <laughs> anyway, this is a great way to do a mid-year kind of check-in on the books that you've already read and kind of see where some trends are and see what you're considering some of your best books and maybe what you want to change in the next year so or in the next uh six months this month has this year has been super crazy 2020 is bizarre and i was really surprised by a lot of my answers so we'll just go through <laughs> these questions and just you know they, just just be aware that it, it was it's a weird year so there's a lot of weird choices in here, I think for me. Um, so question number one is what is the best book you've read so far? And by far the one I would say is Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi, um, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America. I thought this was really, really well done. And I did listen to this on audio by Christopher Piper. So that was also very good, but I'm glad I have a physical copy that I could go back and reference because there are so many time periods in, um, Americans in American American history that I want to go back to and research more or reread he put down and then as I said there's other people who um were influential to that time period and see and read more stuff on them or just certain uh, policies that were created that um because again uh, it was an up and down thing where things would get better and then they would get much worse so I just found the, the experience of reading this book so so interesting, so frustrating, just so ang anger inducing. And yet I got so much out of it and know that I'll return to it. And so I, I have to put it as my favorite book so far this year. Um, number two is your favorite sequel so far, Empire Grass by Tad Williams. I didn't even remember that I'd actually read it in 2020. I knew I'd read it around the new year, but I could not remember it. I read this in February. Wow, it seems like decades ago. Anyway, so this is book two in the Last King of Austinard series. Um, this is uh, the second trilogy in the world of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, the first set of books that he wrote in the late uh, 80s, early 90s that I got when I was in high school and really, really uh, fell in love with. Um, so Tad Williams is one of my favorite uh, authors, and so this series is really dear to me. This set of series, uh, set of, this trilogy takes place 30 years after the first one. So it's a lot of the same characters, but they're older. And things have changed for a lot of them. And then the world is in chaos again, politically as well as, you know, like maybe some weird stuff going on. <laughs> That's hard to explain. Anyway, I, I just really love these books. They are a great epic fantasy series. Again, I would always say suggest reading the Dragon Bone Chamber first, but um, that was my best sequel of all the books that I read. I would say that was the best. It was clearly the best. It was, it was definitely, it was awesome. Um, so number three is new release you haven't read yet. Sorry, I keep looking down at the piece of paper. Um, read yet or and but want to and this is a book i got in february which i just haven't got to and that is a heart of blood and ashes by Mila Vane. this is a how did she write it a dark barbarian fantasy romance something like that so i'm kind of looking forward to this and i just can't make my haven't been able to pick it up it just has not come up in my when i read i have it sitting there hoping to read it and i just haven't yet so this is the first book in a new series um she had a there's a novella that came out about three years ago that i really liked um i think she just released it which was um the beast of blackmore which i really want to reread so i might reread that and then read this and so um it's i mean it's definitely it's very like a fantasy but it has barbarians and there's romance in it and i'm all for this so i am looking forward to this and i really need to get to it uh Millevane is the um, is um, the pseudonym for another an author. Her other name was uh, Mel Jean Brooke. So I really like the Iron Sea. So again, I bought I got this because she, she was one of my favorite authors a couple of years ago when she was writing that series. So I really I'm hoping to like her new series. Um, so then um, number four is a book that you're. Oops, I'm not. My iPad went to sleep. Sorry. Um, that you're really 
look, uh, looking forward to in the most, sorry, most anticipated release um, for the second half of the year. And I'm going to say it's the Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. So this is um, an epic fantasy, a trilogy that this is the first book in the series coming out in early September. Um, and I have it pre-ordered. <laughs> hardback which is kind of scary because I don't usually do that except um this as that this book is a fantasy about a, a kingdom where bone shards are used to animate um I think like mechanical creatures of some sort so the emperor is in charge his gets these fragments from the populace and you know does some magic with them and his daughter Lynn is trying is not being acknowledged as the heir and so she is trying to learn the magic uh, so that she can, you know, be able to be in line for succession. And then there's going to be, I think, a revolution of some sort, or there's going to be infighting. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I only read the first chapter on um, a website earlier, but I do know Andrea Stewart. She and I were in a writing group uh, back in Sacramento uh, many years ago. Well, not many years ago. It's been a while. And uh, But I am looking forward to her book, and it's the number one... <laughs> anticipated book for the second half of the year that I know of that I um, definitely want to read. So I will read that probably in September. We will see. Um, number five is The Biggest Disappointment. So this was hard because I haven't had many books I would say were disappointments. There's a lot of books I DNF'd. I DNF a lot of books. Um, I think I've DNF'd yeah over 20 books. I don't know. I don't remember what the number is. I, I, I'm hoping to do a stats video next week. We'll see. I'm going to try. I haven't done any stats this year and it's really upsetting me because I really love stats. So I'm going to try to do that. But my, um, but I've, I've DNF'd a lot of books so that I don't have to finish them so I don't have to hate them. <laughs> I just get rid of them. So I'm going to say, instead of my biggest disappointment as in one single book, I'm going to say a project. So my project for reading the oldest books on my TBR has been going on, you know, since the beginning of the year. I started it. And I have DNF five of the books so far of the 12 books in this in the list. And I just haven't picked up any others since then because I'm kind of like, I'm just not doing well with this. And there's a lot of books, sorry, that, um, I mean, these books are ones I want to pick up at some point, most of them. But I'm, it's just, I think the, I, some of them I tried and I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I've had this book on my shelf for 20 years. <laughs> so it's not gone well. So um, I would say that was my biggest disappointment is because that isn't going well. And I'm afraid of all the classics that I've left till the end and I haven't touched them yet. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, number six is the biggest surprise. Oh, come on. Sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. And that was... When I re when I listened to "Freedom Is a Constant Struggle" by Angela Y. Davis, um, Ferguson, Palestine, and the Foundations of a Movement, I was so surprised by this. I again, a lot of people did in June. We picked up a lot of audiobooks and or things that we could get to educate ourselves and to listen to new things. And this was one I picked up kind of on a whim. I must have seen it on some list. And again, I knew Angela Davis's um, name, but I didn't know. Um, you know, I didn't know a lot of, I still don't know a huge amount about her. I know more about her now from Stamp from the beginning because it was part of her story was in there as well. But this was really interesting. This was uh, talks that she gained between 2000, I think it was 12 and 2016, around that time period. And so she has all these talks and uh, there's a few threads that are um, talked about a lot, which has to do with racism and it mostly has to do with um, Ferguson and Palestine and... Um, it was really interesting, um, a lot of the things that she talked about that I just had not thought of. And again, it was one of those ones that was thought provoking in a way of not looking at it that way because of um, showing a more worldly view than I was thinking of when it came to racism. So it was very interesting. I, I, I definitely, it was a surprise that I enjoyed it as much as I did. I didn't think I, you know, I thought I was just going to listen to it and get, I would get something out of it, but I didn't realize how much I was going to um, enjoy that. Uh, so number seven is favorite new author debut to you. De so debut or new to you. So I, you know, I could have put down Ibram X. Kendi because I really enjoyed Stamp from the beginning, but I wouldn't say he was a favorite author, even though I love that book, if that makes any sense. I guess I looked at it more from a fiction standpoint because I, a lot of times I'll, I reread fiction books more than I do nonfiction anyway. But, um, 
an author I really want to read more of, which is how I'm going to take this. So I'm not going to say it's technically favorite yet, but definitely one that I'm on, the, I'm definitely going to start picking up more from is um, TJ Klune, because um, The House in the Cerulean Sea was just fantastic, and I really enjoyed this book. So I, he's an author that I'm definitely, or have a couple on my wish list right now that I want to get either, I'm not sure if I'm going to get buy them ebook or physical, and they're also kind of urban fantasy-ish. This is more, you know, this is, this is a little, not quite urban fantasy, but it's fantasy-ish with, uh, you know, and I just, I just found this so cute. <laughs> and I, I want to see if his, his writing style is the same in here as it is in other things. And even if it isn't, as long as the story is engaging and I want to read more of his books, that's great. So he is like one I'm like, I'm going to say on the verge of, I want to pick up one more thing by him and see if he is technically you know, a new to, you know, a, a favorite author, but he's definitely an author that I want to read more from. So I'm going to go with that. Sorry. Um, number eight is newest fictional crush. So again, this one, every year I kind of look at it and going, I don't, uh, I don't get crushes on characters. It's not like that for me. Um, but I do look at it as who is my favorite couple in the books that I've read and who, um, do I think, uh, went, had the best story like that way and that they got together and I'm all happy <laughs> by the end. So it's no surprise that the one I picked was from Nalingi Singh and that is Alpha Knight, which is book number 19 in the Psy Changeling series, don't start here, or book four in the Psy Trinity uh, second series, you know, the series of the house broken up. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is it's like, <laughs> it's way in the series. Don't pick this up for it. But Alpha Knight was my favorite uh, couple. Um, Selenka is like the alpha wolf. She's awesome. And then uh, she meets an arrow, which is like, you know, very um, specialized uh, psi warrior kind of thing. He's psychic. Think, well, not psychic, psychic, but yeah, anyway, never mind. I'm not even going to go through it. Anyway, the point is they, they're the way that they get together and how the struggles after that and what happens through the whole thing. I really enjoyed it. And I thought they were a couple that I, I, definitely uh grew to enjoy as i like their interactions and how they get together and uh, how they stay together by in the end so um that's it was just a, i'm gonna go with a favorite couple is ethan and selinka um so number nine is favorite character so this was really hard because again i have my fit you know i have favorite characters from See, I could have said, like, you know, for Empire of Grass, it's one of my favorite characters of all time. Simon was in there, but I'm not allowed to... He's not new. Not new favorite character. He's, like, an old favorite. So, um, I did look at my books, and I was like, well, what did I read that, like, a character was just, like, new favorite? And I have to admit, it is probably Thomas Cromwell from the Thomas Cromwell uh, tr trilogy by Hilary Mantel. So, uh, this is The Mirror and the Light, the third book. So the first book is Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies, which I read both of those in January and February. And then this one I got right before the library's closed, but I am still only 250 pages in. I still have like 500 pages. I need to finish this. But Thomas Cromwell, she writes him so well in the way that you um, feel for him and you get to know why he does stuff and... Even though he is not, I would not say a good person overall, he does a lot of things that are, and he does actually work towards helping. I mean, he, he's family and friends. Definitely, he looks out for them. I think she writes him that way really well. But you just feel for him, even when you know you're, you're like, why are you, <laughs> don't do that. Or when you find out how he um, did certain things, you're like, wow, that was really masterful. But dude, I don't want to know him in real life. <laughs> like, you know. You know, so he was good and evil, all rolled in one, and grays all over, you know, it was not black and white kind of thing. So he, I, as I said, of the characters that I've um, read this year, he is the most fascinating, uh, definitely, uh, like, the newest favorite character that I have. I just, he was just phenomenally done, and I, I'm still scared to finish that book, and I need to do that <laughs> by the end of the month. Eek. Um, <laughs> so, and then, um, it number what are we at number 10 is um book that made you cry and the only one i could think of that made me cry was the house in the cerulean sea and i think it was just because it's super ass cute and <laughs> i love this book 
Everybody read it. Anyway, I don't even remember why I want to reread this so bad because I read it in early uh, June. It came through on my library on ebook. And then um, right when I was like, well, I really want a copy, but I didn't want to buy a hardback. Anyway, but um, so I was going to buy the I'm going to buy the paperback when it comes out in like next year. And I, but they came, they came on um, sale on ebook. So I have an ebook copy. So I'm probably going to reread it here pretty soon the next uh, month or two. But uh, it was I don't remember. I don't remember everything. And I just want to reread it and re-experience the whole thing again. I just I know it's the only one that I, I did cry because there are certain points where he just hit me and it hit me hard. Anyway. Oh. Anyway, book number or question number 11 is book that made you happy. And I'm going to say Defy or Defend by Gail Carriger. This is book two in the Deliciously Deadly series, which are the grown-up <laughs> books for the girls from the Finishing School series, which is a YA series. So there are young women there, you know, very, you know, teenagers. And then they go out into the world. And this is about 10 years later. And they've been living their lives. And this is book number two. And this is uh, Dimity's uh, story, which I really like her and uh, Crispin. And he, they go, she and him go, he's kind of her protector kind of thing that, that they work in a pair. And they go to a hive. Again, this is uh, Victorian, steampunk, Victorian with vampires and werewolves. <laughs> anyway, so, and ghosts. And so she goes to a hive where the queen has gone into seclusion and all her vampires are kind of, are kind of freaking out and not sure what to do and they've lost all their help and so she goes in to either decide if they um, are able to be to recover and or that it needs to be destroyed and this book was just so much fun again Gail Carriger is one of my favorite authors she just makes me laugh and they're so cute her and Chris were just adorable and I just I love this book and I um I did read it on ebook first and I had to get a physical copy because I'm going to reread this pretty soon probably again I just I, I love her books and these ones um even though I'll probably never read the finishing school again because it's YA and I it, but the main that when the women are when they're older you know as I said this one and poison or protect I believe is the other one they're just so much fun when they're adults <laughs> It's just really, and they're, they are a little adult. <laughs> it, was, it was cute. I, I enjoyed it. Um, number 12, 12 is book, favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year. I've only seen one that was new to me. I finally watched Good Omens, <laughs> which, um, the book was written by, uh, oh, I'm going to, his name is going to go right, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And, um, I read this book, oh god, a long time ago. I didn't read it like when it came out because I didn't know about it then. Um, because it was like, oh, it was like a long time ago. I don't even remember what year. Um, but I read it, oh, I read it a long, I read it, you know, over, over 10 years ago. Maybe a longer than that. I don't remember. And I really liked it. And again, this, the angel and the demon and, you know, the apocalypse is going to happen and everything. So, um, the, the film, um, or that well the mini series was put out I think by Amazon and then it was uh David Tennant and um Michael Sheen and it was just fantastic I really really enjoyed it so it was the only film only one I saw and it took me you know 10 months after it had come out for me to finally watch it even though I had it the whole time <laughs> I just don't watch a lot of um movies anymore anyway but that's the only one I could say uh, number 13 is saying, what's your favorite, like, review? No, I don't have one. I, you know, as I said, I do my weekly reading updates and I just, uh, give reviews of that. I don't do any, um, I haven't done any solo ones in quite a long time. Um, just because they are harder on me and I also, um, don't, I just, I don't want to spoil things for people. So I don't like to go too deep into anything. So, anyway, so I don't have any, like, special or any videos that I really, really enjoyed or doing. It's. It's been a weird year. It's been a hard year. Um, oh, number 14. Hold on. I need to stretch. I forgot one. Uh, number 14 is the most beautiful cover you've bought so far this year. I'm sorry. I had to get it. Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. I haven't read The Shining in oh, a decade or two, and I'm, but I'm going to reread it, and I've been meaning to read this book. But I wanted to get a copy, and I saw this one. It is my favorite copy I've bought so far this year. <laughs> I just love it. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what it has to do with the whole horror and, you know, 
<laughs> the you know the next book in the from the shining but uh, i don't know we'll see and then um number 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year so again i have like again the mirror and the light i need to finish <laughs> And there are a few books here and there that I'm hoping to read, like I'm hoping to read um, The Bone Shard Daughter, and I'm hoping to read um, quite a few Victorian books in uh, in Victober. And I have so much nonfiction I want to get to, like A Buzz in the Meadow is like number one that I want to get to this year so far, you know, in the second half. So I have books I want to do, but the only book I can say that like I need to read because I am behind on this project and I meant to read it earlier this year and it just it just never came up. And that is the Vicomte de Bregleon by Alexander Dumas. So this is book three in the D'Artagnan romances series. Um, this comes after Three Musketeers and 20 years after, I believe. <laughs> I've read, yeah, it's been so long since I read that. Anyway, I read that. So I've, you know, I've read Three Musketeers like three or four times. And then I read um, 20 years after last year for the first time. Finally, I'd had it on my shelf. It was one of my oldest books on my shelf. And I finally read it after like 20 years of been sitting around and me carrying it around everywhere and finally got it. And so I really want to continue. Um, there are five main novels in the romances. And then there's another book that he did not complete but I have that as well. So I want to read that one too, but at the end. So this is the only book that I'm like, I need to finish this this year because I want to get one book done a year at least um, until I get them through. I mean, it would be nice if I could read more than one, but they're all pretty long. I mean, this is 660 pages. So it's going to be a haul, even though uh, Alexander Dumas, it has, his writing is so light and fluffy in a lot of ways that I know that I could, if I, concentrate I could breeze through it but I've just not been able to concentrate on anything for months so anyway but this is the only book that I really want to hit before the end of the year I mean I am that is my goal if I get to December and haven't read this yet somebody remind me <laughs> and tell me hey weren't you supposed to read that book yeah anyway so that is my uh mid-year book freak out tag I hope you enjoyed this sorry I went a little bit longer than I was hoping but I like to talk anyway so um oh how was your reading did you find any surprises when you look back at your six month um reading and kind of went whoa I, I didn't realize that because again it was really hard for me to come up with some of the answers in here while well, last year was like super easy on most of them and I'm like it's weird how or it was really hard and different questions and it was just it's strange this year is strange anyway so anyway i hope you enjoyed that and i will talk to you guys later bye